But could Suyala Braverman be going down in the world? Could she be sacked by Rishi Sunak? Give us your views on this uh, controversy. Well, that's the million-dollar question this afternoon, isn't it? Uh, the government has got itself in a real pickle. For some context, I was at the morning Downing Street lobby briefing uh, earlier on, and we had the Prime Minister's spokesman essentially tell us that this piece, incendiary piece by the Home Secretary in this morning's Times, was not cleared by Number 10, the suggestion she's going rogue, but in the next breath also told us that the Prime Minister, for now, has full confidence in Suella Braverman, and that actually he believes that she does respect his authority. And so I think what we're going to see at, in, in the next few hours and potentially days is what do you do with Suella Braverman? She has consistently uh, gone rogue. We remember the, um, the, the sort of furore about uh, stripping away tents from homeless people in the last few days. Now you have this. And I think that a debate is playing out in Westminster about what is Richie Sunak's strategy with Suella Braverman? Is she just that, a thorn in the side? Or actually, is she quite a useful tool to communicate with parts of the public which potentially Rishi Sunak can't. He's quite mild-mannered, he's got quite often quite, quite softened views, she's seen to be on the sort of the right of the Conservative Party, can she appeal to people which potentially he can't and therefore it's best to keep her in place. So I've just been chatting to a Tory MP ally of her and he says that uh, Suella Braverman is critical for Rishi Sunak's chance of re-election next year. Whether Rishi Sunak believes the same thing, I think will be uh, will be seen in the coming uh, coming hours and days. Jackie and I were both at Conservative Party conference about a month ago, and the biggest uh, figure there, I think, was Suella Braverman, and certainly the most popular figure there was Suella Braverman. Of course, uh, Rishi Sunak's speech was full to the rafters, but there was a lot of talk about her, especially as a potential leadership uh, contender, perhaps the next leader of the Conservative Party should Rishi Sunak resign after the election, were he to lose it. A lot of what ifs in there. But in terms of her herself, is she kind of too big to fail? It, does Rishi Sunak have the authority to sack her even if he wanted to? And I suppose the lightning rod idea that you say, essentially she can say things that he can't say, could be quite useful. But here you have a Home Secretary openly defying the Prime Minister, saying things that a lot of people will agree with, I'm sure, but nonetheless not doing that with the authorisation of Downing Street. Rishi Sunak looks a diminished character to me today. And on the surface, it does look like just that, complete insubordination from a senior cabinet minister against the prime minister. It's a gift to the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats. They're painting out Rishi Sunak as incredibly weak. Labour have released a new advert today calling him spineless Sunak. However, he is in a really tight spot, the prime minister, because like you said, she has a lot and lot of allies in the Conservative Party who are probably prepared to, um, to, 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 to die on the hilt on this one. And I think that for Rishi Sunak, the calculation is, do I try and project strength and potentially sack Willa Bravman if I believe that she is uh, she's committed a, 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 a fireable offence? But then you risk inflaming a section of the Conservative Party who wield a lot of power and a lot of influence. And I think that he's going to be really wrestling with this decision. It's not an easy one. I wouldn't want to make it, but he's the Prime Minister and, and the buck stops with him, doesn't it? It's a very strange situation where you have a consistently controversial Home Secretary with all the fury over the parking fine and who knew what where. Uh, the John Hayes email that she sent to him that she shouldn't have, she resigned, then she was reinstated by Rishi Sunak, which a lot of people find quite strange. Uh, a year later, she, she hasn't shied away from any controversy. And, I mean, we're talking about the political row, but actually the substance of this as well is a bizarre situation, rightly or wrongly. You have a Home Secretary who is criticising very openly the actions of the Metropolitan Police. I wonder if many people see her more as a campaigning politician rather than a governor, essentially, because surely she should be working hand in glove with the intelligence services, with the uh, police, and uh, indeed with immigration, which she keeps saying it has to reform, things that are not fit for purpose and so on. But she's in charge. Mm. Uh, completely. And you know, her allies have been out on broadcast today making the point that the Metropolitan Police shouldn't necessarily be beyond reproach and beyond criticism and that as an elected politician it's her job to voice the views of the public as she sees it. However, as you said, she is also responsible for the Metropolitan Police. Her and Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, hold uh, Mark Rowley, the Commissioner, to account. And what we saw last night was Rishi Sunak, after meeting Mark Rowley, essentially try and calm the situation. He said that he had got reassurances from the Met Police that this march is going to be policed in the proper way. Then, 
chucking a grenade into the situation, Suella Bravham this morning, launching an extraordinary attack on the Metropolitan Police, comparing it to, uh, co comparing this march to the situation in Northern Ireland, which, as you would know, is, no, is incredibly politically sensitive. I thought it was a bit weird and, and a showed a, a lack of understanding of the situation, Jack, to be honest, which is quite worrying, actually, for Home Secretary, who's, who's basically in charge of MI5, about a quarter of their work is in Northern Ireland. So a lot of people in Northern Ireland are very upset about that. But sorry, I interrupted you. Finish your point. Completely. No, and you're completely right, and it seemed that at the start, because obviously, as you know, the, sort of the unionist side were often seen as doing the marches, people were a bit baffled as to her comments by this, and I saw that a source has clarified to the BBC that she was referring to dissident Republicans. But even so, it's the language and the nature and tone of which Suella Braverman yeah. is saying things that actually is, is putting a lot of noses out of joints and potentially people see her as a liability in this government. Obviously a lot of supporters as well, um, and I think this is really sort of a battle for the soul of the Conservative Party playing out in real time. It's very interesting, and maybe maybe she just says what she thinks, and that doesn't quite, in, quite, quite fit into the, uh, to the political world in which we all live. Uh